In this demo, you will learn how to connect your AWS S3 bucket as a storage configuration for your ICA project. First, you will need to create an S3 bucket if you don't have one already. To do so, you can navigate to S3 from your AWS console home, either by searching for it or by clicking for it in your recently visited. Create a new bucket by clicking the Create Bucket button. Here, you need to select an AWS region. Note that the AWS S3 bucket must exist in the same AWS region as the ICA project. Refer to this table from the help site for the mapping of ICA project regions to AWS regions. Since my project is in the United States, I will use US East 1 as my AWS region. Give your bucket a name. Choose the correct settings you need. For bucket versioning, note that all unversioned, versioned, and suspended buckets are supported. If you connect buckets with object versioning, the data in ICA will be automatically synced with the data in Object Store. Refer to the ICA help site for more information on this. Once you've chosen all your settings, click Create Bucket. After your bucket has been created, you need to configure cross-origin resource sharing permissions. ICA requires cross-origin resource sharing permissions to write to the S3 bucket for uploads via the browser. Search for your newly created bucket by using the search bar. Once you've located your bucket, you can click on the Permissions tab. Scroll down until you see the section for cross-origin resource sharing. Click Edit. Now you can paste the content from the ICA help site into here. Click Save. Next, ICA requires specific permissions to access data in an AWS S3 bucket. These permissions are contained in an AWS IAM policy, which we need to create. First, open the IAM console by searching for it in the search bar. In the navigation pane on the left, choose Policies. Select Create Policy. In the Policy Editor section, choose the JSON option. Here, you can paste the JSON policy document from the ICA help site. For unversioned buckets, paste this JSON policy document. Be sure to replace anywhere that says your bucket name with the actual name of your bucket. This example provides access to all object prefixes in the bucket. For versioned or suspended buckets, paste this JSON policy. This is the one that I'll be using. Again, remember to replace your bucket name. Click Next when you're ready. Give your policy a name and an optional description. Here, you can see the permissions defined in this policy. You can also add optional tags. Note that this can also be done via the AWS CLI. Refer to the help site for directions on using the CLI to create an IAM policy. When you're ready, select Create Policy. Next, we will create an AWS IAM user. An AWS IAM user is needed to create an access key for ICA to connect to the AWS S3 bucket. The policy will be attached to the IAM user to grant the user the necessary permissions. Select the IAM service by searching for it in the search bar. In the navigation pane, select Users. Then select Create User. Enter the name for the new user. This is their sign-in name for AWS. Select Provide User Access to the AWS Management Console. This produces AWS Management Console sign-in credentials for the new user. For console password, 
you can use an auto-generated password or create a custom password. Select Next. For the permissions, select Attach Policies directly. Now you can choose the policy you created earlier. Select Next. Once you've reviewed the user details, click Create User. Make sure to get the password assigned to the user. Select Show next to the password to view the user's password so that you can record it manually. Select Download.csv file to download the user sign-in credentials as a .csv file that you can save to a safe location. Next, we need to create an access key so that ICA can connect to your AWS S3 bucket. Navigate to your user by searching for it in the Users tab of the IAM console. Here, you can click Create Access Key. On this page, select Other for your use case. Then select Next. Give a description for your access key. Then click Create Access Key. Make sure to read the access key best practices. You can download your key as a .csv file and save it to a secure location. Now that we have created our S3 bucket in AWS, it is time to connect our S3 account to ICA. To connect your S3 account to ICA, you need to add a storage credential in ICA containing the access key ID and secret access key created in the previous step. From the ICA home screen, navigate to System Settings, Storage. Click Credentials, and then click plus new to create a new storage credential. Provide a name for the storage credential. Ensure the type is set to AWS user. Provide the access key ID and secret access key. Once you have done so, click Save. Now, an ICA storage configuration can be created using the secret credential. Click on the Configuration tab. Select plus new to create a storage configuration. Use the default value AWS S3. Now you will need to give your storage configuration a name. You will use this name when creating volumes that reside in the bucket. The name length must be between three and 63 characters. Select the region where your bucket is located. Enter the name of your S3 bucket. You can provide an optional key prefix to allow only files inside the prefix to be accessible. The key prefix must end with a backslash. If not provided, the entire bucket is accessible. You will need to use subfolders of this bucket in ICA projects to prevent locking issues. For secret, select the credential to associate with this volume configuration. Now you can click Save. Give some time for the storage configuration to load. Hit refresh periodically to check the status. After some time, a green check mark will appear to indicate that the storage configuration has been added. Now you can create a new project using the storage configuration as your data provider. To do so, go back to the Projects tab and click Plus New Project. Give your project a name. Make sure to select, I want to manage my own storage and choose the storage configuration you just created. You can choose to sync the files from the root of your storage configuration or specify a folder in your storage configuration that you would like to sync to. Note that if you choose to sync to the root of your storage configuration, you will not be able to use that storage configuration for any other projects. When you're ready, click Save. Now you'll see this new project we created has an AWS logo in the corner. This indicates that you have connected your own S3 bucket to the project. Now, when we run an analysis, we'll see that our outputs will be in the S3 bucket. First, let's enter our project. In the Data tab, we see that we currently have no data. Let's add some files that we can use in our analysis. With a storage configuration set, a project will have a two-way sync with the external cloud storage provider, so any data added directly to the external storage will be synced into the ICA project data 
and any data added to the project will be synced into the external cloud storage. This means we can either add data into our S3 bucket or add data into our ICA project. Let's start by adding a FAST file into our S3 bucket. Click Upload to add a file. Click Add Files to choose a file from your file explorer. Now I'll select this FASTA file. Click Upload. As you can see, the upload succeeded. This file is currently present in our bucket. When we go back to ICA and hit Refresh, we'll see that the file is present in ICA as well. Now let's try adding a file into our ICA project. Choose a file. and see that the file is present. When we go back to our S3 bucket and hit refresh, you'll see that the file is present here as well. Now let's run a basic Nextflow pipeline. Here is one that I've already created based off of the Nextflow tutorial in the help site. If we click on the pipeline and select start new analysis, we can put in the required inputs. Select the FASTA file we just uploaded as an input. Now we can click Start Analysis. In the Analyses tab, you'll see that our analysis has been requested. After some time, our analysis has succeeded. Now we can look for the analysis outputs in the Data tab of ICA you'll see that a folder has been created here with our analysis outputs. Similarly, we can find our outputs in our S3 bucket. When we hit refresh, we'll see that the outputs are here. If you want to copy objects from a bucket in an AWS account to another bucket in another AWS account, you will need to enable cross account copy. ICA uses assume role to copy objects across AWS accounts. To allow cross-account access to a bucket, the following policy statement must be added in the bucket policy. Refer to the ICA help site for more information. Because of how Amazon S3 handles folders and does not send events for S3 folders, the following restrictions must be taken into account for ICA project data stored in S3. First, when creating an empty folder in S3, it will not be visible in ICA. Files need to be added to the folder for it to be made visible. Next, when moving folders in S3, the original but empty folder will remain visible in ICA and must be manually deleted there. Similarly, when deleting a folder and its contents in S3, the empty folder will remain visible in ICA and must be manually deleted there. Additionally, projects cannot be created with a dot backslash as prefix since S3 does not allow uploading files with this key prefix. Finally, as a reminder, when configuring a new project in ICA to use a pre-configured S3 bucket, you can use the root folder like I did. However, this is not recommended, as that S3 bucket is then no longer available for other ICA projects. Instead, please consider using subfolders in S3 for your projects. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit the ICA help site at help.ica.illumina.com.